Bookcase and Coffee presents Buzzing About Romance, a quick shot of romance. Hi, everybody, and welcome to a quick shot of romance. On this episode, we are reviewing Fearless by Abby Brooks. I am joined by Christina, who you will find on Instagram as Little Half Pint Reads. And this is her very first quick shot with Buzzing About Romance. Welcome to the podcast, Christina. Thank you. Okay, so go ahead and read the synopsis from Goodreads. Okay, so never date your sexy as hell next door neighbor. Filed that under great advice, not taken. Especially if he's hot and witty and successful. Did I mention hot? Never mind. The point's the same. I moved to Wild Rose Landing because my life was a structure fire burning down around me. They say a phoenix rises from the ashes, new. I crossed my fingers and took a leap of faith, hoping that proved true. After a certain ex who shall not be named did something so unspeakable, the absolute last thing I'm looking for is love. I don't have the energy for complications. I need time to heal, to rebuild. Alexander Prescott stumbles into my life and doesn't care about any of that. He offers me a dream job without so much as asking for my resume, which I take without thinking. Hey, a girl's got to eat. Besides, saying yes to new experiences is kind of a thing you do when you're rising from the ashes and redefine, redefining yourself as fearless. And Alexander Prescott is the walking definition of new experience. From his dark curls and whiskey eyes to the spark of chemistry, I fight like hell to ignore. He's a best-selling author, an icon in his own time, but he says he's in over his head and swears I'm the one who can help him. I know there's something he isn't telling me, but that's okay. There's something I'm not telling him. Okay, so this book was released May 3rd of 2021, and the tropes are slow burn, kind of forced proximity. Um... <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, there's really not a lot of trope, tropey type things in this one, but it has a steam level about two and a half. Um, it is dual first person point of view. So you get Alex and Evie, which I like because we all know how I feel about just one side. <laughs> and then the put out percentage is 57%, hence the slow burn. So let's talk a little bit about Evie. So Evie is going through kind of a crisis of self. She's gotten fired from her job. She got kicked out of her apartment. Um, her life is kind of imploding around her and she's not really sure where she's supposed to be or what she's supposed to be doing. Right. So, you know, I was thinking, so Evie, they've always kind of talked about her at the beginning of the book as, you know, she's kind of like this meek person, right? She's mm -hmm. not very outgoing. And, and, you know, just considering the other books that I've read, she's probably not the strongest heroine out mm -hmm. there. Um, but she is very likable, you know, in her own way. She's funny. She's witty. Um, I do think, you know, just with the things that happened to her, like, it's so easy to think, oh, I'm going to burn everything down. <laughs> but, but really, like, that's not her personality. And mm -mm. so while she she does what she thinks is right, um, I, I think she's just, she has her own way of dealing with with what's happening to her. Mm -hmm. Right. And I, but I think like sh she is written sort of meek, but at the same time, she's written very realistic because there are like, there are lots of people who like, they're going through a time where it's just like, everything seems to be going wrong. Like every decision that they make seems like it's the wrong one. So they, they really do like question every decision and every thought. And it's like, am I making the right choice? Right. Right. But yeah, I agree that she is very relatable that way, right? Just, mm -hmm. you know, I, I don't know very many people who would just, you know, up and scream and yell at everyone for <laughs> doing them wrong, which uh -huh. I mean, granted, I know some of those people, just not a whole lot. Yeah. But... I mean, it takes a lot of, <laughs> a lot of guts to do that. <clears throat> right. Right. But, you know, overall, I do think that she, she is again, a very likable character. Mm-hmm. 
let's talk about Amelia a little bit. So Amelia is the best friend who we meet uh-huh. first off, and she is the one who is basically trying to get Evie to come out of her shell in a sense and not necessarily make decisions, but follow the signs. And she has her write down a word that is kind of going to be like her mantra for the next few months. <clears throat> and so Evie does this. I don't want to tell you what the word is because it's a big, <laughs> it's a big point. Um, and so she decides that this is how she's going to live her life. And she's just going to say, yes, she's going to be a yes girl and, uh-huh. and see where it takes her. But I love Amelia. Dangerous, right? Uh, it could but be. Yeah. Yes. Uh, I, I did love that character too, because you always, you know, you need that friend to push you mm-hmm. in that direction. And and I always, I found it funny where she was always like pretending on the phone. This is your fate <laughs> talking to you. Like, I mean, Here, everybody, listen to it. Yes. everybody in this, in like on page knows that she's being ridiculous, but it still happens. Yeah. But that's the thing Like, she is that ride or die who, who helps push her out of her comfort zone, but, but doesn't do it in a way that is harmful to her or hurtful to her or she she does it with the best of intentions and all the love like in her, in her being like for Evie, cause she, she knows that she is destined for great things. And she, like, she's so disappointed in what happened that she's kind of stagnant because of it. Right. Yeah. I, I think Amelia um, probably has some of the best lines in the book. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, do we need tequila? pass out you know just yeah certainly yeah. things like that I really did love from her perspective mm-hmm. so Alex he is the the hero in this book he is an author and has is going through a severe case of writer's block and Evie is moving to this house that is her it was her great aunt's who she hasn't seen since she was very little and Alex has been writing in her kitchen but Uh um and this is a big premise of the book and but she doesn't know it and he has doesn't tell her and it's like this big backstory of like things like chaos going on in this town and I just but he's he's just so lost because he's never had like this kind of trouble like with his muse as he keeps saying and he's kind of floundering himself in some ways right so, you know, Alex, I feel like it, he was really just in the book. He was very, very supportive of Phoebe, like from mm-hmm. the very beginning, right? You know, like there's this girl who's kind of hiding behind, but I see you. So, you know, like he has those great lines mm-hmm. um, and you can tell that that was going to run throughout the story. So, you know, he was definitely the... Um, the epitome of a hero that way with mm-hmm. this white knight syndrome that they all yeah. talk about um but man he is a writer like his inner monologue is funny <laughs> but and that's the thing like it's not it's not a straight out rom-com like it's so subtle because but it's all it's all in the inner monologue and and amelia like uh-huh. she does her things but like his inner monologue like he he's so self-deprecating it is and, and him- the, the funny thing is that, like it reminds me too you know just reading a bunch of like romance books right you kind of start thinking about well you know in real life well in a book this is how it's going to be and that's happening in your inner monologue too Mm -hmm. and so I guess like for writers that just never stops Mm -hmm. they're always just like thinking about those things and again like yeah the book has some ridiculous moments Mm -hmm. of you know ghosts and well there's ghosts and he has like (laughs) and even like the dog and the cat like they become like big big characters because he has like full-on conversations with Morgan the dog Uh but it's like Morgan has conversations with them also (laughs) because like he talks to the dog and he's like he like grunts at me and it's like I know I shouldn't have done that right right (laughs) and how they sing together was again Uh like just some ridiculous parts but Mm -hmm. that's why I loved it as you know just 
you know, there's some lightheartedness amidst mm -hmm. all of what was going on because, of, you know, just all of the you, supporting you knew where it was going. Yeah. Like you, you knew it was going to be bad, but they kept, even in those moments of, of bad, like they, they kept the lightheartedness. So Alex like gets in the zone is doing his thing. Like, as I'm sure many writers like are in the cave and focused. So he is starting to spiral like as things are happening and he spirals and spirals and Evie is very supportive, but there is a big thing that has happened to her in the past, which is a, is a big tipping point um, for a couple big moments in the book, because this is something that she hasn't shared with a lot of people. Actually, she's told two, like Amelia knows, well, technically three, Amelia knows the person that did it knows. And now Alex knows, and he he makes a couple of decisions with this tidbit of information that it really, it really hurts the trust that she has in him. The first mm -hmm. time it happens, she's, she easily forgives him because he explains the, the thought process behind it. And I, I got that. Like I had read some reviews who thought that they felt that she was too forgiving right away. But as he explained it, it's like, yeah, that makes sense. Like why he said it and why he, he told right. her secret and she was understanding in that moment. And, and there was always, I feel like his personality anyway, right. That mm -hmm. he needs to fix things. Yeah. And so knowing that he was in a position where he could do something, but right. he just felt like he needed to. Well, you're right. Cause he, so his, his dad is not a part of their lives. And he goes and visits his mom every day until he's like in like deep writer block, like right. writer cave. But even he always made a, made a point to see her and he saw his sister every day. So it's, he likes to check in on them and he likes to take care of them. And he mm -hmm. does the same with Evie. Like he wants to make sure that she's okay. And like, she's moving forward and she's not stuck. And he is encouraging because she is a writer also. And he's encouraging her to, to get back into it. Right. Right. And, and that's, again, one of the things that I really liked about him too. So he just wasn't this, you know, successful writer. He was mm -hmm. pushing Evie to get to that as well, knowing what he knew, you know, from their history mm -hmm. um, and what happened to her, he knew exactly the kind of talent that she was. And he was mm -hmm. very supportive of it rather than, you know, thinking that he needed to put her down. Yes. So they, they get to this big culmination of everything that happens. And he does something that's really, really boneheaded because he thinks that he is making the right choice when he does this. And of course we all know that he's wrong. Never of course he's wrong. Uh -huh. But so he makes a choice and it's, it's bad. Like, and he's hurts her in a way that I didn't know if he could come back from and I was so affected by that and I've been thinking about it because he hurts her really bad but what he did you know just I, I think the, he could have done worse things he certainly. could have but I think a big part of it was the way it happened also, the way like, it did. And I mean, there were words too. And those words were cutting, you know, they were, they like, were very, and like, but, and that's the, the worst part is like, he knew exactly what to say to make them like to do the most damage. And he did uh -huh. it purposefully. And, and I, 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 I'm not a crier in books, like, but I teared up because I was like, Whoa, like what, like, why? Yeah. He's like, he is sticking the knife in and twisting he kept digging yeah he absolutely. did he was digging and digging um but he did name it his harry and the hendersons moment which i thought was great because i can't i can't say i don't dislike that movie <laughs> like i have watched it multiple times as a kid because i'm i'm that old um but so i just i love that reference and how like he he's she's harry and he is <laughs> mr henderson yeah. in the whole like ordeal and I just thought it was really funny like after like 
like when the resolution is starting and she's like, he, Harry and the Henderson me, uh-huh. and then, but then his sister says the same thing. She's like, you, Harry and the Henderson her, <laughs> that stupid movie. Like, what were you thinking? Yeah, that, that was awesome. And Izzy, you know, who played a really big role in this book too, um, mm-hmm. I thought was amazing. Um, just to keep Alex in perspective, right? Because mm-hmm. He was doing what he was doing. And, and then there was that other side of him where he visited his mom and his sister all the time. Yeah. And so you have those two dynamics. Going well, and, on, I, but. and I think with her, she was such a good shock of reality for him when she confronted, like when Izzy, his sister confronts him, like it was such a shock of reality when she like lays down facts. It's like, you yeah. do this, 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 and this. This would never have happened by like their dad would never have done these things because his, his whole ideal is like, he is his dad. Like he is creating the same lifestyle. He is repeating the same mistakes and he, he just can't help himself because that's what he has been told in the past. And she just flat out looks at him as like, these reasons are why you were not this person. Mm -hmm. And he's like, oh it's okay it 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 clicks and it's like oh well now I'm a dumbass because this Uh is what I did but I love that she she did not take his side like she was mad like she avoided him she's like you're an idiot like I don't know what Mm -hmm. you're doing right right and you know even still having conversations with Evie and not mentioning anything to him or about him so Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I and mean, that's the that's thing. Like a friend. <laughs> well, in in this book, like they have a fairly decent separation, but it was, but it made, and I don't always like that in a book, but it made sense with the way um, Abby Brooks wrote it. Like, if it had been shorter, I don't think it would have been as natural feeling because he had to to come to the realization of like rock bottom chaos like but also like Evie had to to hit that top where she was like I can do this he encouraged me to make these decisions but I am going to do this for me and so in that separation like they both hit these these moments of clarity where he realizes with Izzy's help of course like this is this is my reality and this is what I've thought my reality is but Evie is like comes to realization that what happened in her past is just that like her past like it it doesn't affect her future because she is a different person a better person because of what happened to her right agreed and so I think just the way that um it all culminates in the end i mean it certainly was a i feel like it was a satisfying way to Mm -hmm. to end it right you know um the way that alex apologizes was probably Mm -hmm. one of the better ones that i've read it was so spoony Uh like that was (laughs) I'm I'm not always a big fan of the grand gesture because sometimes I think they're over the top or just kind of silly, but his, like, it was a moment, but it Mm. is, but it wasn't like one of those moments that would just happen and to be done with like his moment is sticking. Like it is right. It's there for, for everyone to see. And to me though, again, with how it was that was a long time coming to you mm-hmm. like that apology was created yeah during this time but she didn't see it until way in the future right and so well that's the thing that she didn't but even so she she gets the apology uh-huh. but she ignores it yeah and I thought that was something too because she she makes the, dec- the decision in that moment that she is not ready for it I mean, granted, she doesn't understand what it is either, but like she gets that apology and she's like, I'm still not ready for that part of my life yet. Mm -hmm. Let me go build myself back up. Exactly. So did you like this book? I did. And so it was 
one of those that, again, it was light in a lot of things. It was funny in a lot of ways. And then there's some angst to it. Again, Mm -hmm. it's not super angsty, but there's Mm -hmm. enough of it where it leaves you thinking about it after, you know, you read the book. So yes, there's, there's a lot of those, um, that, you know, just those aspects that I liked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed it too. About 25% in though, I wasn't sure if I was going to, because the book moved really slowly for the first like 25 to 30%. And I, I didn't know. I actually, I texted Becky. I was like, I don't know about this book, (laughs) but I, but I kept reading and I'm so happy that I did because it like that slow beginning, like there were, there was a lot of like building up to these like big moments in the book. And I just, I thought it worked really well. And I'm so happy that I powered through. I'm glad you did. Okay. So who would typically like this book? Um, I guess just, you know, someone who is, again, likes some light rom-com who doesn't want super angsty reads um, Mm -hmm. and can get to it pretty quickly too. Um, And I know I listen to audio, Leah. Yes, you are an audio (laughs) fanatic. And and, uh, this book was narrated by two of my favorite narrators, Connor Crace and Stella Hunter. And so I enjoyed, you know, that aspect of it too. So if mm-hmm. you enjoy audio, that's, this is definitely like one of those that you need to listen to just because the funny parts are funny because yeah. of how it's delivered. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, just if you want to light read. Yeah. Like if you like a slow burn, but like rom-com light with a decent amount of angst, but it's not over the top and it's all in my, I'd say 90% of the angst is internal. Mm -hmm. So would you recommend this book? I would. Um, There's a lot of um, self-reflection in it. And Mm -hmm. again, being that Evie was a character that I felt like a lot of people can really relate to because of her personality, again, not being, you know, the loudest person in the room. She Mm -hmm. was always just she was there she was enjoying herself and you know everyone was talking to her just fine but she wasn't again the most flamboyant person Mm -hmm. so um I think it is very relatable that way um maybe I would just put a trigger warning somewhere (laughs) in there because there was just one part of the book that I didn't expect Mm -hmm. and and it has to do with you know why Alex is the way that he is yeah and so yeah um I, I just I think um, the actions of Alex was certainly driven by that. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. I mean, you did recommend it to me. So I did. And I, I think I would recommend this. Like I said, I wasn't sure going in, but I really ended up enjoying it. And I know that other people that like read the books that we do would and especially if the audio is good, because we have a bunch of people in our hive that really enjoy the audio book. Yeah. And and, oh, so being that this is the first book in a series, right? And Mm -hmm. so there was a lot of buildup with the supporting characters that you know are going to have the friend group. Well, and that's like, I just really enjoyed like um, his group of friends, but how they really pulled Evie in. It's like Alex wasn't around, but they didn't care because they had Evie now. (laughs) Right. Right. Yeah, so, yeah book- so it did build up to what book two is going to be, which should be releasing soon too. Yes. And book two is Amelia. So the best friend and Jack. Jack. Yeah. He's a single dad, um, a widower. So it should be an interesting because Amelia is a wild child of chaos in a little bit of ways. And but then they showed Jack as having really chaotic kids too. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it'll be interesting. It's, it'll be that. interesting how it plays out. Okay, well, yeah. thank you so much, Christina, for joining me on this quick shot of romance. I'm happy to be here. Okay. Happy reading, everybody. Find us on Instagram at Buzzing About Romance or on Twitter at Buzzing Romance. If you like the podcast, please leave a review. 
If you'd like to support us directly, join the Bookcase and Coffee Patreon and receive exclusive content only available to Patreon members. Check out bookcaseandcoffee.com for our on-the-shelf show notes. 